Well, hello, friends. I pray you're having a great day today. Happy hump day to you. It's Wednesday. We're halfway to the weekend. Just hold on. You'll make it. I guarantee you. Hey, welcome to today's edition of Take 5. We're in the series that we started on Sunday that we have titled The Sixth Sense. Uh, and we're making that comparison to the Holy Spirit, recognizing him as that sixth sense that God has given us. Let me read four verses from 1 Corinthians. That'll help clarify it for some of you, maybe if, if you weren't here on Sunday. Listen to this. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those that love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit, for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except the person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except his own spirit, and we have received God's spirit. So that's why we are privy to some of these things, because God has given us his spirit, not the world's spirit, he says, and he's given us his spirit so that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given to us. So we're calling this thing the sixth sense because uh, the, the writer there, Paul said, we haven't seen it with our eye, we haven't heard it with our ear, we haven't imagined it in our mind. So all of the senses that God has given us in this physical body, touch, taste, sight, hearing, smell, all of those things are what help us determine uh, what we need to do and help us make decisions. It adds to our intuition and our reasoning. And, and from things that we've seen in the past, all of that is attached to those five senses that are directly related to our flesh. And our flesh doesn't always make the right decision. It doesn't always know what to do because these are the senses, the reasonings that we were born with. But we were born again with a sixth sense called the Holy Spirit. And he knows how to enhance all these others so that we know what to do and what to say and, and, and how to respond and how to react if we'll just learn to lean in to the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, Paul said in Galatians 5.25, since we're living by the Spirit, we need to follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. That's everything. That's, that's not just in, you know, what we do on Sunday. But in everything we do, we need to follow the Spirit's leading in our occupation, our relationships, our finances, our purchases, and, and the way that we serve the Lord in ministry efforts. All of this, we need to learn to lean into that sixth sense. Now, this study on the Holy Spirit is really designed to help us understand more fully what his work is, and how that we as believers can have a deeper, more wonderful, and more victorious Christian life. God has made great things available to believers. He, he said that in that passage. He said that, that we can't imagine them with any of our senses, but God has revealed these great things to us by his spirit, and we need to learn what that is and how to receive from him. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to begin to ask ourselves some questions. Who is the Holy Spirit? What has he come to do? And I think that's very essential. Today, let's just talk about who is this person called the Holy Spirit. Now, if you've been in church any length of time, you'll say, well, Russ, that's simple. That's who comes to dwell in us when we get it. I get it, but do you really know who he is? Because I think a proper understanding of who he is is absolutely necessary if we're going to be the kind of Christian that Christ intends for us to be. Since we're supposed to live by the Spirit, let's know who he is and not just have these religious assumptions that we have about him. So let's talk about what he's not first. First of all, he should never be referred to as an it or a thing. He's not that. The Holy Spirit's not an it. He's not a thing. I guess you can say it if you're talking about the Holy Spirit's power. You can say it, but, but never about him. He is properly referred to as he, and we'll see that in just a minute. The Holy Spirit is not some material substance that can be physically touched. He's not some specific quality of goodness or love or morality. He is not some impersonal force 
or some form of energy. The Jehovah's Witness religion teaches that the Holy Spirit, right straight out of the Watchtower magazine, this is their definition, he is the active force of God in the earth. And that sounds okay at first if your mindset about him is limited, but but active force has no personality and it's so limited to just one thing. But now before we say anything about the Jehovah's Witness and their definition, we need to stop and think how a lot of our churches from the past and even now in the present relate the Holy Spirit to the world and to our uh, congregations. There's so many that believe that the Holy Spirit is only revealed during exuberant and charismatic moments of worship and prayer, or on the flip side of that, he's only revealed in very serious and solemn moments in our church services. Now, basically all of my life and most of yours too, probably, we have limited him to the same as the Jehovah's Witness. We've made him some kind of active force that comes down when you pray the right prayer, when you say the right thing, and when you sing the right song. And and quite honestly, that, that was my roots and a lot of yours as well, but I've really got tired of that. I've, I've grown tired of us limiting the Holy Spirit to that, and there are so many people out there that are just searching for that, and when you do that, you are searching for basically the same thing that the, a false religion has classified him as you're looking for some kind of active force to come down or come in and take over. You know, we've all been in those services where we said, man, the Holy Spirit just come down tonight. Well, well I, I get what they're saying, but, but the fact is, he didn't come down. He came in when you walked in the door, if you're saved, because the Holy Spirit lives in every one of us. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't say, Russ, you're just trying to reinvent the wheel. No, I'm really not. I, I want us to see the full spectrum of what the wheel is. Ezekiel said that he is the wheel inside the wheel. And, and I want us to see what the full spectrum of the Holy Spirit is. And I'm afraid that we have learned to associate him just with phenomena instead of learning that he is an actual person and learning what Jesus sent him to do and be in our lives. And I think that's something that we need to get a hold of. And we're not going to have time to jump into it today. We'll do that tomorrow. But remember this one thing. He's not an it. He's not a thing. He's not just a phenomena. He's just not the power of God that came down. He is the third person of the Trinity. He is God living inside of you. And we'll see what the scriptures have to say about that some more tomorrow. Hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. Look forward to being with you tomorrow on Thursday's edition of Take 5. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.